Hi everyone, it's Kristen. Welcome back to Generation Acres Farm. It's been a really long time since we have uploaded a video, but I'm hoping to get back into uh, more of a consistent schedule and routine. Now that we are living in our house, so that's what we've been up to, we are finally in our home. We actually got the final certificate of occupancy yesterday, which also happened to be my birthday, which was a really awesome birthday present. So we're very excited to be out of the camper and in the house. It's amazing. But it's the middle of March now and we are in full on garden mode. I don't know if you can kind of see behind me, way back here behind me, you can kind of see some bricks. That is the beginnings of what's going to be our potage garden. We have our um, green stock here, which we filled, the kids and I filled with strawberries. We had a huge bed of strawberries at our last house and we miss it so much. So we definitely wanted to get some strawberries going so we can have some fruit this year. But for my birthday, what I asked for is that my kids and my husband would help me to get the gardens started. So we created this garden back here using bricks that we found on the property and we're going to be adding raised garden boxes and eventually a greenhouse back here. And so this will be our main garden space. We're working on some fruit trees and different things like that that we'll be putting in as well. But today's video is all about my favorite way to start seeds. So this does not require a greenhouse. It doesn't require any lights or heat lamps or heat mats. Um, it is so simple and produces beautiful, strong, healthy plants. I've used this method for years now, well over actually about five, five years. And my first two years of gardening, what I exclusively used this method to um, start seeds for my garden. And I had wonderful plants, super healthy and vibrant plants. Um, we did end up getting a greenhouse, which I loved as well, but we don't have a greenhouse now. So, um, and we also happen to have a ton of extra bottles because we were living in a camper, which we didn't have good water. So we were using, um, water from the store. And then we actually, this is another video for another day, but we acquired some goats, which we are now after a series of unfortunate events, bottle feeding. So now we have a bunch of milk cartons as well. So I figured this would be the perfect opportunity. I've already started a bunch of um, seeds and I figured that I would go ahead. I was going to start a couple more since I had some bottles. I figured I'd just film it and show you my favorite way to start seeds. So basically it's called winter sowing. You can start them in like January or February, depending on your zone that you're in. Even if you have snow on the ground, you can start them using this method, which is awesome. I actually have a blog post all about this. So if you're curious about specific um, like what kind of seeds and things you can start using this method. Um, I'll link it in the description box down below. I'm trying to keep this video short, so I'm not going to go into all those details, but check it out in the description box down, down below if you need more, want more info about what kind of seeds you can start using this method. But basically the idea is that you're creating a little greenhouse for the seeds. So we have this bottle here. It's clear. The sunlight can come through it. There's no cap on the top, so the water, the rain or snow or whatever it is can get inside and water it. Um, we have our soil in the bottom, drainage holes, and you can see, I don't think I put a date on when I started these sometime in February, but look at the um, roots. Aren't they doing awesome? These are some white night sunflowers. Um, so anyway, they're doing really great. I'll show a close up of those too, but it's the simplest things. I'm just going to walk you through it really quick. Here is our milk carton. I'm just gonna use a knife to start. What I like to do is actually start with a little hole and then I use scissors. I find it easier just to use a pair of scissors to cut. Now we're gonna cut all the way around until we get close to like the handle. And we wanna create a hinge. So we don't wanna cut the entire thing through. So we have two pieces. We want it to stay one piece. We want it to do that, just like that. So after that, we're gonna go ahead and poke some holes in the bottom for drainage which I just used this knife on this Leatherman for. You can use a drill with a drill bit. I've used that before. That's especially helpful if you have harder bottles like this juice bottle, um, but these milk cartons are super thin. So I do four to five drainage holes in the bottom, just like that. So that water can get through. Then we put our soil in. So you can either moisten the soil before you put it in, or you can 
moisten it after. So you want the soil to be wet before you put your seeds in. So I'm just gonna pile it in here. I have a pair of gloves next to me that I'm not even using. All right, here we go. I'm gonna get some water and we're gonna water this in. So you don't want it to be sopping wet. You just want it to be moist. You know, a little bit dripping out is good. So I just like to kind of press it in once I've watered it in like that. And then I use something like a Sharpie and make little holes in my soil. So I'll make like five or six, depending on the size of the container. And then today I'm gonna do some Swiss chard seeds. We love Swiss chard. I love to fry it up with my eggs in the morning. And I just drop them right in. And then then just gently cover it back up again, like that. And you can use something like a popsicle stick, label a popsicle stick, stick it down inside. And then as well, use a little bit of tape, like duct tape or something like that works really well. And I like to label both. I actually, because we just moved, I do not know where the popsicle sticks are along with many other of my things, <laughs> which I guess is how it goes when you're moving. But, um, so I'm just gonna label the outside, but I would suggest sometimes the sun will fade the, um, the marker. So I like to use a Sharpie that helps. And then putting something inside will also help too. So I just label it. Um, sometimes I'll write the date sometimes I don't it doesn't really matter but there is our Swiss chard and then I will just add this to my collection of containers which I actually like to create a little I'll show you um, I put just some raised some bricks around and I put this inside because the wind will blow them over or if you have like a puppy or a dog or something they can sometimes grab these bottles and drag them around which is not what you want so I create like a little space just to keep them upright while they are um, germinating and that sort of thing. Uh, but it's really hard to mess this up. Um, my daughter, my little toddler who's three helped me do some of these and she like loaded the water up like there was water pouring out everywhere. She put the seeds in and I was like, oh my goodness, there's no way these are gonna sprout. They totally sprouted and they were totally fine. So um, this is my favorite way. I hope this video was helpful for you. If you have any questions about it, you can leave them in the comments down below. I'm very excited for the gardening season and all that's coming. All kinds of fun things to share with you guys. So be on the lookout for more videos. Make sure you subscribe if you haven't already. Give this video a thumbs up. It just helps our channel, helps us reach more people. Uh, so thanks for watching this video today and we will see you in our next one. Bye.